All right, folks, in today's video, we're going to build this fuse block. It's from a buddy, Chris, and he's got a YouTube channel, Ham Radio Experience, and he's got an Etsy store called Ham Things. All that stuff will be linked below. Oh, yeah, I did want to mention that my buddy Chris sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. So I guess you could call it a sponsored video. And if you don't like that, go watch some cat videos. Okay, so let's take a look at what's included in the kit. These are two fuses that I supplied and you need to supply your own fuses because Chris doesn't have any way to know what uh, fuse you need. So these are just some cheap fuses. I don't really recommend this brand. Um, I got a box of fuses off of eBay and uh, here they are, but uh, I wouldn't recommend them because I don't think that they're as good as some of the um, other fuses that you can get like Busman or Little Fuse. But we're going, to we're going to try these, and then we'll actually test these fuses in this device once it's completely built. But let's take a quick look. You get this PCB board, and then you can see that it does have some markings on here. I don't know how entirely important the markings are, but they're there nonetheless. And then there's some other information about the different board model. There you can see it right there. And this is version 002. And then it comes with these power pole adapters, and these are pretty handy. You can see that they actually have these bent devices, or I don't know what you would call them, connectors. And they're for sliding into the slot on the board. So one thing I wanted to point out real quick, if you take a look at this, this says positive, and this one says negative. And so when I put these on the board, it's the negative that's lining up with the positive. But if you flip it over like this, and then you solder on this side, and that's what we're going to do, you then have your positive connected. I don't really think that that matters too much. When this is done, the kit that I have, there's various kits. There's some that do and do not come with the enclosure. You put it into this 3D printed enclosure, which, uh, let's see if we can get a zoom in on this. Looks pretty good. And that should work just fine for us. And then it had this piece of paper in there, and it says for assembly instructions, you can scan this thing or you can go here. Uh, also, when you go to these instructions, we'll take a look at them. There's a link to his Etsy store. So here are the assembly instructions for the Ham Things Fuse Block compiled by Chris and 9 CVR. And then here's a link to his Etsy store. But if you scroll down, he's got some pretty good table of contents here. And it goes through some different things that you want to pay attention to and the tools that you're going to need. And then the kit contents. And so like you'll notice this one has these staples in here. And that is for the kit that is not part of the enclosure. And then he goes through all this. But essentially you just put your power poles on solder them in place and here he talks about how you don't need these staples if you're using the enclosure and if i come down here it just shows how to do that then solder in the power poles and we should be able to figure that out i'm a little dense but i don't know if i'm that dense um, here's how you put these um, fuses on here you connect these terminals and then you put it in and do your soldering and he's recommending the use of helping hands which is a good thing and when you come down here, you can uh, do some conformal coating. Um, I don't think we're going to do that. And then if you have the optional 3D uh, printed closure, you can uh, follow these instructions. And then here is the final product. Let me go ahead and click over here. And this is the Etsy store for Chris. And if you take a look at this store, which you can notice on here, there is... The fuse block, block complete and then here's the just plain fuse block kit and then here is the enclosure links to this below okay so let's proceed with the build so we already have this one in here if we take a look what we see is that our positive is connected over here to the red and then we're just going to take this second one and we are going to put that in here now this must have some sort of crossover inside the board because when we do that you can see they're not exactly lined up the same, but you need to do that to ensure the polarity of your power poles is correct. So we just have that. Let's set that down. Now I'm going to use this pen. Um, it is a flux pen, and the real reason I'm using it is because I paid for these flux pens and I never use them. So I'm just going to put a little, little dot on there, and maybe that will help me with my soldering. All right, so we got the flux on there, and what we got is a hot soldering iron right here. And so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to solder these. And I'm just going to hold that on there, and I want to give it a little bit of time to heat up because this is a lot of metal here, and I just want to make sure that it's, it's going to work okay. 
Okay, and that was a relatively easy soldering job. And then you can just see right here that we have everything taken care of. So the next thing we want to do is we want to get these pieces out. And these are the pieces that we would use to connect the fuse to the board. And then according to the instructions, what we would do is that we would just go ahead and we would put these in. Okay, so here's what we did. We carefully slid these into the fuse, right? Slid the fuse into these connector pieces. So if you take a look, when you first start doing this, this is definitely a tight fit. So you want to make sure that you're very careful and gentle when you do that. The next thing that you want to do is you want to take this piece and then you want to place it in here and we want to solder that in place. Now when we solder it, we need to be extra careful that this thing is as straight as possible. So what I always use for these things, this is just a piece of stuff called blue tack. And I just kind of stick that on there and then I can use this to align where I want this fuse to be. And that looks pretty straight to me. See if I hold it like that, you can see that we're on there pretty straight. And then the next thing I'm going to do is per Chris's recommendation is I'm going to use some of these helping hands that I have here. And then I can just install this. There's a couple of different ways to do it. Let's go ahead and make it tight. Oh, I lost a piece somewhere along here. It is. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust this. So it's pretty tight and I'm just going to put this block in here. Okay, so after using the blue tack to hold my fuse in place, I've got that in my helping hands. And then you can see right here on that back row is where we want to solder. So let me just go ahead and get some solder ready. And then we're just going to go ahead and begin the soldering process. Okay, so we completed this up. Not the best solder job in the world. I'm just going to go ahead and repeat that for the other side and we'll be right back. All right, and our second side is soldered. So what you want to do is you just want to assemble this together. It's pretty simple. You just put the board inside and I put this one fuse in here because the fuses actually hold this top cover on. And then the next thing I want to do is take my blade fuse and then I want to just put it in here. I just want my blade fuse in here like that and then go ahead and slide it in. And the box is complete. All right, so now what we want to do is a quick continuity test. So I've got my Kiwitz HT118A. And we have the backlight on and we have it set up for continuity testing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one of these probes and I'm going to put it in the positive side over here. And there you see we have continuity. I'm going to just check against the negative and we do not have continuity, so we're good. So check the negative. And we're good there. And I'm going to check the positive, and we're good there. So it seems like it works. Let's stress test it. And there we go. We have the fuse block connected up to my benchtop power supply. You can see that right here. And uh, we are getting voltage through the fuse block. Now we're going to put a draw on this and see if we can pop one of these fuses. Okay, so here's the fun part. <clears throat> we have 3.8 volts running through our circuit and coming into our tester. So this tester is like a Maker Fabs uh, load tester or something along those lines. And then we have this connected up to our benchtop power supply. So when I start to adjust this, down here these zeros will change as we pull current through. Now these fuses say they're rated for 2 amps, but I don't know if I believe them. Because they're cheap Chinese fuses and those things are often incorrect. So right now we're pulling about an amp and a quarter. Here we are. Now we're over two. We're close to three. So let's just keep adjusting and see if we can get these fuses to pop. Now the fuse quality is no indication of the quality of the box. It just goes to show you that some of these cheaper fuse. Oh, I think it just something. Yeah, there it goes. And there we go. So it looks like the box works. It would protect a circuit if we put it in line. And I want to say thanks to Chris for sending this to me. And again, links will be below. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching.